All right, man. <laughs> as as we were, how are uh, have you been? Da, 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 da. We don't have the cool. We don't have the cool intro. I'll, anymore. I'll add it later. <laughs> it's already happened by the time we're talking. So yeah, we well, gotta find one of these. Gotta, you, gotta, you gotta add some like fucking weird shit just to like. You gotta make the intro to some weird shit just to mix it up. You know what I did in the finale is I made I made uh, a theme song cover of um. And did you check Did you check out the finale of the Planets reunion? Oh, you know I I, I just I started listen I just started listening to the whole series. I was listening to um, was it Adam? Is that is that the guy's name? Yeah, the very first like, one. Yeah, Adam. Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So I, I I was I've been making my way through it. I I'm um at at work now. I got the I got the opportunity to listen to a lot of podcasts. I do I do a lot of bullshit work at work. I work at a I work at a drug factory now. Like I, I'm literally rolling joints for a living. <laughs> it's it's the best. But it's, it's like the place where I live. It's it's fucking weird. It's like turned into like a company town. It's like uh, uh I basically live in the middle of fucking nowhere in like a desert, and uh, there it like the whole town is just fucking disintegrating. Except for there's just these giant plots of unused land that are being turned into like just marijuana industry warehouses. And so it's kind of turning into like a weed boom town. <laughs> I, I, have I talked? I don't think I've talked about this on the podcast. No, no. Well, you weren't, you were still unemployed last time we talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's weird. It's like a, um, it's kind of like Detroit. During the, uh, you know, during the, uh, the, 60s. the car factory days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so back when it was like a, a center American production, uh, now it's, you know, now it's sort of slowly, slowly turning into a, a weed town. It's like being gentrified by, it's, it's being gentrified by like drug entrepreneurs. <laughs> I don't really say gentrified. Like it's still a really shitty place, but it's like turning into like a huge, like, like a huge like industrial center. <laughs> like well, uh, like Mike Tyson lives out here. He's like got fucking property out here. Wait, wait, wait. Did wait, I tell wait, you about wait, the wait. fucking Yeah, it's fucking dead ass Mike Tyson. So fucking lives out here. And you're not talking about Palm Springs or Palm Desert or Twenty Nine Palms or Joshua Tree. You're talking about Desert Hot Springs. I'm talking about Desert Hot Springs, which is literally the wrong side of the tracks from like Palm Springs. And it's you know, it's like you cross the free. It's like you know, there's Palm Springs, and you know, there's even, there's even like nasty shit, like like Cathedral City is like also like really ghetto. Um, and then yeah. you get into like Palm Desert, Palm Springs, and like those are those are you know considerably nicer. Um, and then like on the other side is like Desert Hot Springs, or <laughs> where it's 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 like if you read the local newspapers here, it's there's just like some like like cartoonish violent crime that happens like every fucking day. <laughs> like we got a uh, like like a while ago, there was this like woman who got arrested because she had her like her like foster children like selling drugs like to strangers on the street for money, and so like these like eight year old kids are just wandering around like, hey, Mister, you wanna smoke some crack? And <laughs> and they're like, where are your fucking parents? <laughs> and oh, uh, dude, the fucking picture of the lady like just. They they put the pic the ladies mug shot in the paper and it's like yeah just just imagine oh, in your head no. the kind of person who would let their foster children sell drugs and it's exactly what you think this person looks like. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah oh. but anyway Mike Tyson lives out here because there are um you can kind of get up into like the mountains a little bit and there's. Like there's there there is a golf course out here, and there is like a gated community. It's kind of one of those things where Desert Hot Springs is for rich people who want to. Well, it's for lo it's like upper middle class people who want to like pretend they're rich people and like live in like the, you know, like live in the fancy like Palm Springs gated communities without yeah. having to pay a Palm Springs gated community kind of price. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so you so there's this really weird just bizarre uh combination of of just sort of like barely affluent people and then like just dirt poor 
like crack hobos. Like we had uh, like just across the street from me, we had like people living in like a tree. Like <laughs> they were like living in a tree, like across the street. There's just this like big open There's stretch of trees? fucking vacant land and this like big mesquite tree out there. Uh... And uh, they burned it down like twice. Like they set it on fire like two different times, like over like one winter. Like we just drive by and, and it's just like, oh, the 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 hobo encampment burned is about is burning down again right across the street from our house. And <laughs> oh so they got they got chased out of there by you know, they, they came in and just kind of burnt down the tree and their like, little shack there they had. So the, the city like just like generally I don't I don't support uh criminalizing homeless people, but I mean they were like setting shit on fire and like you know how California is basically endangering like the entire city. <laughs> so like, you know, maybe maybe they should just be somewhere that's not flammable. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, uh yeah, so Mike Tyson lives right here. There's all these weird celebrities that come out here cuz it's still close to LA, but you know, it's really cheap. So you can just pick up a house for nothing and then just have your, you know, have your little little summer home or winter home or whatever. And uh, allegedly, he's trying to build like a fucking weed theme park out here. All like right. he did a music festival last year, and uh, that was well. God, twenty twenty just didn't happen in my mind. So two years ago, he did a music festival, um, and then his plan was to like start a weed themed like amusement park out here. And I have no fucking idea like how the fuck he's gonna. Uh, who knows what the zoning is for that even? <laughs> so, it, it, so at, at some point, I think in the next like twenty years or so, like Desert Hot Springs is probably going to turn kind of bougie, but well, maybe. Well, the pl- it'll renting, be like, it'll be like going out to like it's, it's probably going to be like going out to like you know USC where it's like the campus is really nice, and then all of a sudden you realize you're like in I'm in yeah you're like I'm in like urban LA like I am in it I'm in the shit like <laughs> you go like two blocks from either direction from like USC and you're just in the middle of fucking you, you know you're just you're yeah, just in the yeah. middle of like, South super Central scary, Los Angeles like, yeah LA. yeah <laughs> uh, I was about to say like it was a good thing you have a place there but you you rent and you don't buy so yeah we fucking so. rent so I assume uh, I think our landlord just doesn't know we're here half the time which is probably why we're we're still able to live here <laughs> <laughs> until now uh <laughs> yeah until now um yeah. anyway that's but yeah that's the update okay. that's the okay. update for me we've been we've been we've been you know satanist working in the drug factory sure <laughs> uh, the, I, the war on drugs is over dude we won like i'm gonna I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna I re- side one. <laughs> I'm gonna return to that in a minute here but uh, uh to answer your question from the very beginning uh we did change up the theme song for the finale of the planet's reunion like oh fuck yeah okay, okay. stereo party thing and uh yeah basically what i did was i i i i, I the the main song that planets did was a song called scared coyote mm. and it's essentially just two chords it's a and c a minor and c all right and, all right. Um, and so it's um you know, it's a pretty simple song, but it's very kind of, mm-hmm. but by the way they do it, it's very kind of, um, it's the highlight of the show. It's the big, it's the big climactic piece in the live act. And, it's, uh, uh it's, it's the doors, the end, but, but uh, for similar. The uh, I would say it, it might be the, um, it might be the break on through. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause they have some songs that have are more finale based, but this is like the kind of peak, like, in the center of the show, like that that hit song. That, oh, like, I got that you. takes you from yeah, the yeah. first half of the show to the second half of the show. And I um, dig it. I dig it. And it's it would be if you had a hit sing if you had a single to promote that would be the one. And anyway, all right, all I, right. I I, uh, I whipped together very quickly a sexy lounge cover with oh, uh, complete yeah. with upright bass and bongos. <laughs> <laughs> Just whip that oh, up dude, the day. Finally. <laughs> send send it to Ryan to do upright. Bring it back. It was like all right, we're in business. And, um, Dude, you know, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, the Luna pianos are really nice. So I'm just like, you know, playing around and it worked, it worked out really nicely and they're, they're, they dig it. So, um, uh, that's, that's, uh, that is a change in the theme song, of course. And of course we had the original theme song, which I might bring up maybe on 
this coming Monday because we're gonna we're gonna have a um not a filler episode we're gonna reissue one of like the beefiness records of all time. Oh, uh, sick! <laughs> it's one that Eric and I did a few years back, and it still holds up because the records are st- still around. So. That's, oh fuck yeah, dude! Well, fuck yeah! Yeah, that's the one where I is it like yeah. Mr. Lonely stuff? Like, what is it? Uh... No, no, it's more of like records we all like, like the the beefness albums. So that'd be like, oh okay, oh I see, I see albums that we consider to be just like, you know, um, just the way the aggressiveness, the bombastic makes the way. Like for example, I'll, I'll throw a like it goes, it goes on, on a couple. How hard does it go? You know, oh, as okay, far as okay. like intensity, uh-huh. and it's not necessarily like a try hard way, like a Springsteen diamond kind of way. It'd be more like mm-hmm. a, like a kind of <laughs> the audacity of like, I don't know, like a electric wizard dope throne. Not, okay. to, give, not okay. to give away the <laughs> list, you know, for people to listen to mm-hmm. the podcast, but like, or the way, or even contextually, like, for example, the way Led Zeppelin one showed up out of nowhere and like, bah! like, Oh my God, what the fuck? Uh, so stuff like that. And, um, so that I'm going to, Eric and I kind of went down a list of things we thought would be good. This is like 2017, 2018 era, uh, of the, right, of, the right. of the podcast. So it was a, um, you know, it was a good show to do. and It's a good, one we can bring back. So that's the cool part. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, so we're moving into we're once so now that your planet series is done, we're moving into the 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 beef universe phase two. Well, yeah, I got I got to reset my <laughs> I got to reset my interviews too because I I got I have a series of interviews I want to hit up, and I just need to do it. And yeah, it's no, more about, yeah, it's a level of um just like mustering up the sort of weird mental courage to like email random people. And, yeah, no, oh, absolutely, that's like a um. I don't, it, it, you know, you'd think that, uh, you know, you'd think that modern technology would have like removed all of that, like anxiety of like talking to people with, you know, all of its anonymity. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like, yeah, who gives a shit? It's just like an email. It's like, they don't even, they're not even going to fucking see how you're dressed, but it's like, it's more nerve wracking. I don't know a single person. I don't know a single person my age who like, who likes their phone. Like, it's just like a constant source of like, <laughs> you know, so it's like someone tries to talk to you. It's like, oh my God. It's like, you fucking hide it. Yeah, you know, he's like throw it under a pillow. You're like, I'm yeah, leaving the room yeah. until like they stop calling me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I at least I, I I am a talk. I'm 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 not much of a talker to random people, but I am a talker for people yeah, I yeah. know. So it's like okay, so you know, but also I can write better than I can talk. Ironically, so um, <laughs> so and that being said, I, I I have you know I, my plan is is. Um, you know, this is sort of an idea I had in March, kind of when I was at your place. We were, uh, I was reading uh, Dennis McNally's Kerouac biography. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, hitting up uh, uh, the City Museum has reopened, uh, the Beat Museum in San Francisco has reopened. Oh, and, shit. Fuck yeah. And um, we've got a road trip that we got to go check that shit out. It's it's cool. You should, ch- I'll, like, let, let me, if you want to, we'll do it. Cause, yeah, fuck yeah, man. Um, we should totally do it. That'd be a good. That'd be a good road trip. You know, for people who, uh, for, uh, for someone who 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 loves the beats, like I do, like zero traveling. I'm like a, <laughs> I'm like I'm, I'm not living the nomad lifestyle. Well, you it's... you you do the thing. You you're you're on your you're on your fucking global Jack Kerouac shit. Yeah, I took... live in a cave. I like live under a rock. <laughs> it took me it took me a while to get to that point though, because it was like I started. I finished on the road i started reading it in like 2013 didn't finish until 2015 and then i read the dharma bums like right after that in like a day and a half <laughs> and hell yeah and because i was like i really want to read this and i was on a road trip to san francisco we were going to oh, uh, hell yeah. cruise and um and that kind of hit me in like how did the hell did they do this and this is me yeah. right, right out of college this is like a year or two out of college and I'm like, am I missing out on life, man? And it's like, you know, yeah. mid-level. And like, I don't have a job. I don't really, I have a job, but it's not really like, it's, 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 
it's contractual and it's like once a month and it's not going to, you know, get me in. It's not going to help me get anywhere. You know, like really like I need to start hitting up studios and you start doing this and this and like all, all this shit and think. And then like, if I do that though, I'm really going to miss out on all those like crazy road experiences too. Right. So like, Hmm. And it wasn't really until like maybe, uh, probably until 2018 where I was able to like say, Oh, well I was on the road traveling for touring, but also, oh, yeah, yeah. But also, like, um, that allowed me to go, okay, I can arrange these things and fund things a certain way to go out and do that. So Mm -hmm. it's definitely, no, yeah, it's definitely an MO now because, you know, like, that's that's sort of just like, you got to get out and see stuff because. Well, I mean, especially now, you know, you know, who who the fuck knows how bad the the new Corona Delta shit's going to (laughs) be. It's like we could, I'm like, I'm I'm thinking about winter, we're probably going to have. At the very least, mild lockdowns again. Like, I'm everyone's not, like, yeah, walk around without your mask. I'm like, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I'm not as pessimistic about that. And it's mostly because it hasn't really been that bad to people with the vaccine. Yeah. So Yeah, like, true. Yeah, there, there's been a lot. Like, I think it's going to be it's going to be real bad for like all the anti-vaxxers and stuff. Like, the, <laughs> it's going to be some fine by the problem's going to fucking take care of itself. They're going <laughs> to like all the people who like we're just like, yeah, fuck it. No vaccine. It's like, well, yeah, the worst one is just going to fucking get your ass anyway. <laughs> right. So, and I'm I swear course... we're not going to, I've been reading that, that, that we're not going to need booster shots or anything, but I'm like, yeah, we'll see about that. And like, I, even if it is, got, take like, the boost, yeah, I'll take the booster shot. Fuck it. Like, when we know, got like... Corona of fucking 2022 fucking flying around, you know, and it's like <laughs> well, that I'll... shit's. The way it's supposed to, uh, in Ventura County, we're about 70% with one dose. So we're kicking it. I think we're feeling pretty good, but we're feeling ourselves up here. Um, yeah. And it's a little bizarre because I've been into places where it's like I've been into more crowded spots, fully vaxxed. Oh, yeah. And so it's yeah, like. Yeah, definitely. You're, I'm certain, seeing the people at the supermarket like not wearing masks and shit. Like that's freaking me out. <laughs> yeah. Are, you are. Are you vaxxed or Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a super vac. I got I, I got all all ten vaccines. I'm I'm vax maxing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be you're, a fucking great you're alien. Maxed, by the time you're you're vax to the I'm max. Gonna, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like I'm I'm gonna be just a completely new being by the time we're all done with this. It's like all my all my RNA is gonna be completely rewritten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a. Um... Yeah, but regarding that the, that Delta variant, it's like, and I still know a few people who haven't who got COVID and now don't think they or they're not convinced they need the vaccine be, after oh, the yeah. bodies are all said and done. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that works out. You know, he they said, well, if, I think one of them I remember saying, um, I'm not going to name names here, but they said if it was between, they're going to figure out if it was worse to get. If it was worse to get, uh, if the I don't know if he said it, it made the way he said it made made more sense with the way he said it, but I also didn't buy it. Or, yeah. <laughs> or it's like we're gonna see if it was better to get COVID or better to like if it, or oh, sorry, better to just fucking well, get, like get if the, the, immu- if like... the immunity if your antibodies were better than reacting it better than the vaccine would do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I, I think, think he, I think uh, he, I think he's a goddamn moron, but. It's like, yeah, whatever. I'll get polio. I don't give a shit. We'll see if my yeah. I, I, I mean, very bold of him to just like self eugenics himself like that. Just place. <laughs> I kind of commend him because I mean, everyone's <laughs> always just like, you know, everyone's like, oh yeah, like my genes are like superior. But it's like, it's like, how often do you actually get the chance to put that to the test? You know, yeah. it's like, you know, good, yeah. good for him just sticking his neck out and being like, I trust my genetics. <laughs> I, the way the best analysis I've had of this of the, of from someone who's covered I think the guy who writes he writes for the Atlantic I don't know his name but he's been kind of a frequenting a podcast I follow on like the, mm-hmm. the Bill Simmons show and <clears throat> they talked about um, essentially what the equivalent of this like and he to an, use the vaccine as an analogy is basically if your immune system is like a Toyota Camry. <laughs> right it's it's it works well it's efficient it gets the job done blah 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 and then this vaccine essentially is getting a free upgrade 
to like either a sports car or sports SUV. So like an Acura <laughs> yeah, or like go. a really like it works. It 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 boosts your immune system like like ten times or whatever. And it basically it's it's like uh, it like uh. The safety features are insane. It runs, you know, it, it just takes it all up to the nth degree. And by the way, it's free. You know, like yeah, not... yeah, holy shit! Like just yeah, just good. Honestly, I can't believe Americans aren't just like just like yeah, sign me the fuck up. It's... <laughs> so you know, I was thinking uh, just yeah, just because it's free shit. You know, I was I was thinking today. It's like you know, it's like no wonder like they're like people are just like yeah, fucking, I'm not going to the, you know. I'm not getting these vaccines because it's like we've just been ripped off by, you know, we, we've been ripped off by doctors for so long, you know, where it's like, you know, we've got the, we're in the middle of the fucking opioid crisis and, sure. you know, they've just kind of been purposely, you know, prescribing, you know, purposely prescribing like addictive drugs to all our, all our fucking <laughs> boomer, boomer generation parents just to, you know, just to get them hooked and make a buck for pharmaceutical companies. And they've, you know, and it's like our education is getting worse and worse. So it's like people are people. So people know they're getting it's like people know they're getting ripped off, but they're like not mad at the right shit because they're too dumb, you know, sure. so it's turned into like it. And it, it's like it's like, well, you know, with the way the medical the way the medical establishment sort of comports itself, it's like, yeah, no wonder no one wants to go get a fucking vaccine because it's like, yeah, this is probably just a scam to get me hooked on some drug i'm gonna to have to take every fucking you know i'm gonna to to take all the time and it's like why would why would i trust them about fucking anything yeah so and it's also the idea know, we, got, of- we, got, we got these you know america is a place where a thousand different um corporate psyops are all just bouncing off of each other at the same time and literally <laughs> just making everyone crazy yeah <laughs> well i will also add to that because i'm not i'm not always like like capitalism is kind of what it is i suppose but it's also the american mentality like, yeah so like like for a couple things one is is like um not to get into like holistic medicine or anything like but like essentially we're not a preventative healthcare system we're a we're a reactive oh, yeah. healthcare system and yeah there's like no plan there's like no plan for when when like big shit goes wrong and then like right, everyone right. needs a lot of attention yeah <laughs> yeah like 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 uh, it's just, we can fix heart attacks more better than we can ever, or we can we can prevent. Not uh, we we never we never talk about preventing the heart. Yeah, attack. there's no like. Oh, yeah, we don't have like you know we don't have like obesity prevention programs it, like all over the place that you can just freely access. You know, it's like you got to get yeah. get an insurance company and go to a you know go to some kind of you know get your insurance to pay for fucking. You know, pay for your, like your your nutritionist yeah. classes and stuff. You know, um, and and the other thing was was uh, uh, and I'm, I'll I'll get this to a point where I was I just finished a book by Scott Galloway, who was I I saw him on the Bill Maher show and he was like the smartest guy I've seen the Bill Maher show since like Dan Carlin, and uh, Dang, crazy, and uh, he was uh, but the other the other the other kind of American concept is like or Amara Burger. This is like the Amara Burger element. But like, but like, uh, uh, if, 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 if some is good, more is better, you know? Yeah. And it's like, well, not yeah. really. Like you can't, if you don't like, yeah. How much, how much vitamin C have we wasted? This past oh yeah. Year? Because yeah. we only can take in like a hundred percent of it mm-hmm. and we just keep drinking or dousing and it's just like, Oh, like you're just pissing yeah, it yeah, away. It's just going straight through your kidneys, man. <laughs> Like get a little vitamin D, get a little vitamin C, get outside, get a little fresh air, healthy, all that stuff, you know, but like, you know, it, uh, that, or even just like, oh, well, if I just only drink a shitload of kale smoothies, this will, you know, like that, that for me, I get like, that gives me the runs, man. That's, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, absolutely. everybody talks about fast food. I always like, this is a weird thing, but I always think, I never think of fast food giving me diarrhea. I you know, know I, yeah, I feel like but... I feel like fast food just gives me like really, oh, uh, it just gives me like really. It, it, it's it's not so much that it, like makes but me high blow fiber out my stuff. Ass. It's just like I feel sick like all the way. Yeah. It just like moves all the way through, and I just feel like shit, and like I can feel it physically moving through me. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, definitely like um, yeah, health food actually gives you like like eating like 
greens and shit, you will just blow it out your ass. Like you right. will just fucking explode. And it's not, and I'm not want to say it's bad. It's just it's that high in fiber. That's just how it, it's just all that <laughs> that vegetable matter just fucking yeah. builds up in your colon and just it just turns it into like a swamp. And so it's like you're literally just blowing like swamp gas and like fucking peat moss like out your asshole. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, to, to to I love how we got into shit like so fast. Um, but talking about like Scott Galloway's book was was basically like like this perverse patriotism in in like talks of like liberty, where he basically like like do the same people that are like liberty touting libertarianism and liberty like individual liberty. Um, are those the same people that would have been like, say, you know, and we're also like, this is also combining like, uh, Eric Moulton. I just finished like Dan Carlin's like Pacific theater, world war two epic. Of, oh yeah. Of crazy. Yeah. The Japan, like, which is highly recommended by the way, especially if you're talking about like molding cultures. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and how, how, how Jap, how the, the empire of Japan was able to like mold a society of like fanatics and, and yeah, yeah. just do it like, so every time I hear this that argument, like, well, you could have dropped the bombs, you know, you didn't have to drop the bombs. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> nuclear weapons. Apologist, Steve Collar over here. You know, here's the deal guys. <laughs> Just because, you know, like, and th- th- this is sort of like me going against the Howard Zinn people's um, like that book uh, is an, in- you've, you've read the book, right? Uh, no, uh, I haven't. People's History of America or United States or whatever it's called. No, I haven't read that one. I know, I know, I, I know about it. Everyone says it's like really good. It's it, it's, it's solid. I I was recommended to it by my my boss, but like, I I I I got the audiobook version because I'm just like I'm just gonna have it read to me, like feed it through. But like, essentially, it's it's like, it's it's a downer's version of American history, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this was oh good, but this, who is, this I'm is sorry like... to interrupt you, but my, uh, my pet cockroaches are, are moshing with <laughs> get out of here. Sorry. But seriously, <laughs> no, <laughs> but there are cockroaches. And, uh, I, you know, if, if they were pets, I could scream at them and they do what I want, but, <laughs> You know, I, th- I saw one of them do- take like a big flying jump. Like it's finally like hot enough out here that I think they're yeah. they're kind of starting to like fly. Because yeah. apparently, uh, uh, apparently all cockroaches can fly. It's just like like humidity like triggers it for some reason. Like they won't fly unless it gets like really humid, and then like that like makes their little fucking cockroach brains go like, huh? You know, I can I can I can I can I can, I can become airborne. And we've just had like a we've just had like a disgusting like two weeks of just like high humidity and like it's humid out here. Yeah, like it yeah. won't fucking rain, but it's like it's like one twenty and like fucking muggy. Like it sucks. Like we're getting like Florida weather. So, Eesh. so all the all the palm sized insects are like learning how to fly. We're we're coming back to uh, you know we're coming back to like Cretaceous levels of. Uh, oh, of like you know atmospheric composition so it's like they're able to get like bigger <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> anyway i'm sorry i didn't so, mean to interrupt so that, i was so. i was talking about howard zinn and and uh i was it was going on a tangent on another tangent but scott galloway's book about it was called post corona he wrote it in august of last year so he didn't anticipate election results or um even like the Biden administration's take on all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. Like he was more about predicting the future, how things, what, what is, what has happened in the last few months. And, and mostly it's mostly on like economic and, uh, big tech and education and stuff like that. But he was, you know, his last, you know, paragraph or so, or last chapters really kind of dealt with like American, like faith one part of it is faith in the government and like you know actually mm-hmm. investing in the government not like not in a way it's like trust your politicians but it's like but you know, get involved like, in like local politics and like, stuff and but yeah like the like this is you know and that kind of led to the whole world war ii thing basically saying like everybody you know the most patriotic people aren't actually patriots at all they're basically like you know against they're 
they have they they have the least support and faith in the government to do anything for them and don't want them to do yeah anything. yeah <laughs> so like and so there's a level of like well you know these these of course you know the the you know if you don't and i have no problem with libertarians just don't use our roads you didn't if you don't yeah. want to pay for them don't use the roads um uh <laughs> Yo, you're gonna you're gonna say that, and then you know you say that, and then there, there's gonna be the one fucking like libertarian billionaire who like builds like the the wild wild west robot spider, and he's just gonna be fucking. <laughs> he's, he's just gonna be like, I'm not using the roads, and just like stomping fucking houses and shit, like literally just walking straight lines from A to B. <laughs> I get, I just that that leads me on to like some like sort of like how like it's like God, I hate Ayn Rand. <laughs> oh. but um yeah so it was it got me into the whole you know uh go, japanese government like 1936 thing you know like where you know anyway that's, you know that that's a fascinating story man like that the uh uh i feel like that's 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 pretty it's pretty like unexplored or, or i mean you know not not explored as much it, it doesn't have quite the same um like cultural hold as like you know exploring like nazi government and shit yeah you know? yeah it's, but that's... like yeah the whole the whole like sort of like development of like you know like ja- that like extreme like right wing you know that that like extreme like right wing like japanese nationalism is like fucking nuts yeah and the idea that they were gonna like liberate other pan-asian like colonies from their european colonists and take yeah, over. Yeah, like that's pretty, that's but it's pretty like, far out too. But it's that's like, like that, that, that's like one of those like, oh man, like this is like this is one of those like secret like, oh this is actually why we got involved in World War Two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so you're taking away like you're in like and so the Japanese thought press is we're gonna liberate, we're gonna kick out the European uh, Western colonials. And then form our own colony there because we can do a better job because we're the superior like uh, Asian ethnicity, yeah, they, or whatever. Yeah, you know what like, I mean? Oh, like yeah, we're the superior Asians. <laughs> like so, like the idea that these guys, like I always think about this because it's like I think based on the Howard Zinn, and I've, I've heard this from a couple other people, but usually people who kind of hang on to the Howard Zinn book a lot, and I I agree with some stuff he says and disagree with some stuff he says, or at least like get a little like i sort of eye roll at the uh, like the ongoing cynicism (laughs) oh yeah yeah where it's like here's because it's like we think this is good but here's who we fucked over we think this is good but here's who we fucked over and all these processes and that's basically (laughs) what the book's about and like it's not wrong and it's like not and i'm also like you know it's not one of those like it's like yeah i I can't i don't know what to say man like about uh, i don't know (laughs) And yeah, he's, he's, I, he's, on some, he's on some life is suffering. He's, yeah, he's on some yeah. like peak life is suffering shit. Uh-huh. So <laughs> you know, I agree with you. I think that uh, uh, I don't really like you know I don't really like um, like Albert Camus, um, but I mean I oh you, you don't I, I understand the, like look because where I'm going is like I understand the like it's like look you gotta like if you, it's like you gotta find something you enjoy you know <laughs> yes <laughs> like, you yes. gotta find like some. It's like if you want to continue being alive, it's like you have to find like some. You had to find like something, you know. Yes. It's like I, I, Albert Camus pisses me off because he's, he, you know, you know he takes things to the extremes, like in, like in the like the plague and stuff, where he's just like, oh look how much suffering there is. It's like oh it's great that we're all still alive though. It's like we're living in a fucking hell realm, but you know, okay. good thing we're still alive. Okay. I was like, at a certain point, I, at a certain I, gotta, point okay. I just believe that pessimism is completely warranted. <laughs> well, I gotta rec- I gotta recommend to you the short essay "Summer in Algiers." Okay, because that that is like Camus personally, based on his actual like life, was not a was not an abysmal human being. He was very much a, an enjoyable cat to be around, and his life See, look, was I, tragically I, cut short. Albert by, Camus changed my life, like literally. Um, yeah, I remember like, the story. Like the, this is why it's, I'm puzzled. Yeah, the stranger like fuck. Yeah, the stranger fucked my whole shit up. Yeah. I, like, like, uh, like, I'm, like, I, I just about like walked out of my fucking like high school. Like, we all read the fucking stranger, and we were like writing like an essay about it. And I was like, 
I was like, dude, this is like so stupid. We're like writing an essay about like a dude who just like fucking like kills somebody because like he's just, he was just in the mood to, you know, and it's like we gotta like analyze this shit. And I'm like, he just killed the guy because he was in the mood to, man. And I was I was just like I was like I was like, it's fucking existentialism, man. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was just about like, yo, I'm gonna fucking walk out of this room right fucking now. And I was <laughs> like, that'll be my fucking essay. That was the last. That was, well, the second, well, was an edgy teenager. That was the second. Uh, I, I, la- the second to last day of school of high school. We finished that book. We read it in like the oh, last man. week of week, week of school. We're already graduated. We're done. Like we're we're set to graduate. We're already done. This is like because whoa. Uh, so you guys are like reading it just like after all that shit. And it was the one That's book extreme. I was looking forward to reading the entire time because we we kind of uh-huh. had we we waited our the way our teacher was our, our English teacher. Uh, she's no longer here on this planet. So, but she was way too. Um, per- procrastinative and very oh, lethargic yeah. <laughs> on how she would go about each each thing. So it's like you know you have to like senior year of English, you got to cover Hamlet, you got to cover um. Yeah, you something. got to get all your like AP English like yeah, testing. You get, you get your um, crime for... and pun- like yeah, so crime and punishment, big deal. Like you got to get in your something else, and I forgot what it was, but like you know all these different like works and the syllabus and stuff, and I'm like okay. When do we get to that book? Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, I will say se- senior year English. I think was like that was my most fun. That was the most fun class I had in high school. Because like, the really Durbills ain't cutting it for me, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, we read fucking uh, man. We read we read fucking crazy shit. We read uh, uh, Beloved, like Toni Morrison. Have you ever okay. read that? No, no. I I always get that confused with Cry the Beloved Country, which I did read. Okay, dude, Beloved is like a. It is like a psychedelic. It, it's like a psychedelic occult ghost story about like, like three generations of like. It's it's about this like slave woman who escapes and uh, you know becomes like a you know and, and just like it's just about her life like post Civil War and stuff. But it's just it's so fucking like trippy and weird. It's like a, it's it gets into like Thomas Pynchon like postmodernism territory okay. yeah, and yeah. It, it's one of those things where it's, it's like they really it's like it's like look it's like at the time I, I was kind of like you know i was kind of like oh yeah this is fine or whatever and then looking back on it i'm like that was so weird i'm like it, it's kind of this like magical realist narrative you know there's like ghost <laughs> shit that happens in it and uh yeah it's far out that was a really good one and uh we read all kinds of shit yeah yeah we hit like crime and punishment we hit uh Dude, we fucked with uh, like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Oh, nice! That was that was bitching. Um, we read a bunch of like William Faulkner stuff. Um, That's actually awesome. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we had our, our my AP English was like so based. Like we read we read the craziest shit. Oh, man, I'm trying to remember the. I think we got we hit like Invisible Man. I know there was there was stuff where they were like you know they would give us an option between like reading two books and. I'm a bookworm, so I just I, I read yeah. really fast, so I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd like read both of them, you know. I'm I'm I want to be a bookworm. I, I I'm one I, I'm one who I, I, it turns out that my hobby is actually collecting books that I don't read. Um, oh, dude, no, that that's me too. You're like the only yeah. dude I know who like actually reads. Like you're the only other one. Oh, I appreciate. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like you've got, I'm like, slowly... you've got like an actual bookshelf back there. Like yeah, I, no, you know? I'm, I I have like Bradbury kind of romanticisms about actually physical books. I don't, uh, with the exception of audiobooks. I, I prefer to call it like autism or maybe OCD. I like I I literally like I have a Kindle and everything and I just don't use it. I'm just like no, nah, if I don't have the if I don't have that physical sensation of like nearing the end of a book, and like it just doesn't it doesn't give me the fucking dopamine. I dig that, <laughs> yeah. And it's sort of like part of me is like, I think similar with me. Like for me, like getting me to go do something it takes a lot of momentum. But once you're in the zone, yeah. it's not that problem, not a problem. And it takes almost everything like that with me. With like, oh, getting to this point, like getting to a book. And that's why I never really was that good at like practicing piano just because I never wanted to get to the piano to practice. Yeah, and think no, about exactly, the mundane exactly. notions of, uh, yeah. But once you got in there, I'm like, okay, I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. But I was like, am I done yet? I don't know. I think I'm yeah. done. Did it two times, did it three times. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like hard. It, yeah, it's like it's like doing like skill based stuff like that. It's like, it's like a lot harder to 
know, it's yeah. a lot harder to like judge like, oh, that was a good segment of, you know, that was a good segment of my time used. What I really should have done more. was got an audible.com account and uh, started listening to something else while I'm practicing. Being oh enough, yeah. So I had yeah. There answer. you go. Yeah, dude, I, I, I finally, uh, I finally got an audible account. Cause I, I, I was like, I'm going to run out of podcasts to listen to at work. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I basically just sit there and like listen to shit the whole time. And I was like, okay. I was like, damn, I'm probably going to have to, I got to tell you about my addiction to audible.com because, uh, Oh like, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Well, what's dude, going- how, many, how much unread shit you got in your queue? <laughs> uh, I think I got a hundred. Damn. And I, uh, these are books I've bought too. Um, I, oh okay. fuck yeah! Okay, I've this, downloaded like, the shit that I want to read on Audible. Is like it's none of the stuff that's included in the in the, the like subscription package. I'm so pissed. <laughs> well, all the Burrow stuff, most of the Burrow stuff is, by the way, all the uh, okay. Oh, okay. if you really right, well, want I'll, to I'll do that. Naked but uh, what they started doing though, um, um, it, there's a sale going on right now because most of my most of my Audible. A wish list is full of the great courses series so they're more like college oh, okay. courses waiting to go and not necessarily books to read and i have books to read yeah, there yeah. too but like in especially like the ones like the will durant like history of civilizations and stuff like that oh um, yeah yeah but um <laughs> right now what's going on is that most of those books they like most of those courses range based on um how long they are and how like intense they are and stuff like that like a lot of, there's a good there's a there's a music guy Robert Greenwood I think is his name he does all the music stuff for classical music and I think at jazz class. oh shit cool and it's some of the best like stuff like and like it's it's great tuning up again for like his music history and stuff but what I'm gonna say <laughs> is that um all the co- courses currently right now until the end of summer are ten dollars mm-hmm. each yo and okay. they well, range gonna, there goes my paycheck and they. <laughs> I'm for, so right now to pace myself. I'm like I, I'm doing buying a course a day because like I spend that much at lunch anyway. So it's like bam, okay, you know, one course. So like I'm I'm like I like I'm looking at this right now, and it ranges all those philosophy courses, all the history courses. Um, I wish there was slightly more technical stuff, but like it's really hard to do that in an audiobook. So all the all the yeah, most, yeah. It's a lot of it is 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 business and liberal arts stuff which i i'm it's all like okay, economics okay. And stuff yeah that's, that's a your alley like yeah. i love my dude I, I i was looking so hard i'm trying to find all my like i'm trying to find all my like zero books like crit theory stuff but like basically you know all of my all of my postmodern like french post structuralist structuralist literature like literally like defies audiobook <laughs> like uh, interpretation yeah. uh, which is which is which is a shame because i feel like you know, I feel like maybe if people could like listen to it instead of read it, like it would stick a lot more. Like I think if you could, that's if you why could I listen to a, a, an audiobook for like anti Oedipus, like I think people would be more <laughs> more inclined to fucks with it. Yeah, but also speaking of Oedipus, like that's why I think the ep- I do the epics in audiobook because they were oral histories and they're oral told or- orally anyway. That's a good so point. It's like, yeah, I'll take that. And then what I also do is like there's classes there's great course classes based on like uh elizabeth vandiver is the professor i think she does and she does like all the mythology stuff so she just she's doing like uh she has a class she's a course she has a class that breaks down the odyssey is a class that breaks down the iliad a, break, a class oh, that breaks down cool. aeneid and i think herodotus histories and the only one i haven't read of all any of that stuff is actually uh aeneid, the aeneid because right now i'm in a greek like, right, like get all the Greek shit in, and then like, then yeah. you can move to Rome. But like, it's not really true either, because I kind of just need to go to that point. I need to fluctuate between the two, because like, I'm realizing that the Greco-Roman concepts is basically very left-right brain, depending on the society. So Greece yeah, is very yeah. ancient. Greece is very left brain. It's very creative, philosophical, high-minded, uh, more more be- beatific, beautiful concepts. Um, mm. And then the the like very like creative, and then like the Romans are not very creative, but they're very well. They're not very creative in like an artsy way or an aesthetic way, but they're very like logic, tactic, engineering, like get shit done way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah, we can make a dozen of your statues for like you know on based in concrete because we made it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. We can just mold your statues, you know. Um, and so their their whole engineering, like society, civilization, the roads, the bridges, the aqueducts, all that's all very 
right wing brain. So like, I don't know. It's, it's, um, so right yeah, now I'm, 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 I'm just fucking book clubbing. Have you checked out, um, <laughs> we should uh, just call know, like, Arnold. We should just call you know, that. Fucking, that should be uh, the name of the segment is like a book club. Yeah, no, true. I think it's like <laughs> I really kind of enjoy by, get Audible to sponsor this shit, man. We have a literal fucking book club on the podcast. <laughs> we got a better name for book club, or just like you know the Lost Beat Six book club. Uh, Lost Beat Six, uh, uh, print printed, come, come club, <laughs> the book book come on books club. <laughs> <laughs> the uh uh the, the jerking and what's some of the rhymes what's book related that rhymes with jerking <laughs> merkin Jer- jerking and working <laughs> and and merkin yeah yeah merkin which is all fucking i guess is related jerking jerking the merkin and and, and working we'll, we'll look at it we'll, we'll workshop it we'll twerk <laughs> we'll twerk it a little bit yeah, we'll twerk it. <laughs> but I think that works out because I was like, we need a segment for like these conversations that we're having because you know, that's a. But well, it's like I could talk all day about this shit because I have fucking. I saw this meme the other day that was like, that was like, oh, it's like you don't understand. That's my emotional support pile of unread books. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you should see like right now what I'm looking at because I start I start dabbling. I'm sure you do this too, but like, you might you might be you might be better actually finishing off books than i am yeah and where where i have and i keep buying them too but i have the pataphysics book that you recommended oh yeah, yeah i have i have caradini's like uh influence the new edition of it i've mm-hmm. already read that book based on, on an audio book but i'm like you know what there might be new versions new updates on that it could be interesting yeah um, true i have uh let's see here Visions of Cody Kerouac. I bought I bought Bourdain's um, posthumous like travel guide, um, which is more of a travel That's guide place. than an That's actual based. book, and and it's it's um, it's also kind of more of a um, like a highlight from like it, the, it, all the quotes are basically highlights from the show. <laughs> uh, and then I got uh, like discourses on Levy Levy Livy, which I still need to finish. Um, that's dry as fuck though, but <laughs> it's, it's, interesting. and then, but yeah, I also, so sometimes you just gotta, you gotta power through like really dry shit. To, yeah. To get and then, some I, good then ideas. I picked up Tarantino's new, uh, uh, once upon a time in Hollywood book. Oh yeah. 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 So I've, that... I've, you know, I still need to see the movie and I want to oh, read really? the book. <laughs> yeah. I, I know I'm the last man on earth who hasn't seen that. I know Eric and I want to rewatch it. So maybe you should come out in a few weeks. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's, there's Dude, we a... should uh, we should check it. We should stream it on uh, two seven. Speaking of speaking of shilling for uh, shilling for corporate services, uh, <laughs> two seven's pretty based. It's like a. a have you, did you uh, have you did you movie night with us at all? I don't remember. But no. it's basically like I'm a. Night um, with Corey. It, it does like uh, it, it, it's like a website that does like watch party stuff okay. for. Uh, it basically takes. All your all your stuff that doesn't have watch parties like HBO Max and then like makes it oh. able to do oh, watch cool. parties. Yeah, because yeah, the and Apple like, stuff does it with like cause... everything, like Netflix, Disney, oh. um, uh, HBO, and then if you if you if you slip them five bucks a month on uh, Patreon, then they um, uh, then you can actually uh, uh, just like stream your computer. <laughs> like you can just you can just like stream your your um, so you can like run like DVDs or whatever, or just like pirate something. Oh and... shit! Send me a text for that because yeah. that's yeah, yeah. Because yeah, if definitely. I can get like it's... I always I I build up my Apple TV library, you know, to actually buy mm-hmm. movies because that's like buying DVDs. Like it's essential buying DVD. You can buy it's like the equivalent because it has the extras now. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, yeah, because I, I, I yeah, have... I shouldn't have said pirated. I should have said if you happen to have video files on your computer <laughs> obtained by legal means you can uh you know you can stream them for home use with your friends yeah so don't so, hire so, it no, not to, <laughs> as you can see i'm this this far into it so i'm just starting i'm in chapter two but oh, I've, hell yeah. I've, I've been listening to his he's been on a giant media uh a me, a press tour uh for this oh cool he's been on a book <laughs> tour and so he's been on like a dozen different podcasts and shows and stuff. So I've been watching, looking at this and basically what this is, 
is like, it's almost like a Star Wars, like, you know, like <laughs> how Star Wars have novelizations and like extra myth mythology behind that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, it's like some sci-fi writer building on that. And then like George Lucas just uh, like okaying it and they're like, whatever. It's like, that's like the EU. This is, and this is, this is like, this goes deeper and answers any of the questions that you still had about the movie <laughs> and also just a shitload of extra like trivia stuff based on that. Cause it's like, it's just Tarantino like spewing like extra, like, did you know these facts? Um, like <laughs> fun oh, facts weird. And, and within like, <laughs> and, and it's also, but it also builds on the universe of like, um, of that movie, which is very romanticized, like Hollywood origin movie stuff or not Hollywood origin, but it's like, it, that movie is it's obviously a love letter to a specific time in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, it, it's like when you have like it's like if George Lucas wrote an extra novel, like oh yeah, there's a, a, here's the extra things I didn't or extra scenes that I've I had to cut or <laughs> you know like because they're just they're just ext- like too much extemporaneous information or it leaves you or it gives you too much information about a character. You know, it's funny you mention that. I literally, I literally just read the novelization of of the first Star Wars movie, like, like the one that came out. <laughs> in episode four, episode four. And that's the book Conan version Pro. that came out, right, in seventy seven. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Uh, um, it was it's credited to George Lucas, but it's um, it's credited to George Lucas, but uh, another the, dude basically just ghost wrote it. Right, it's the and, Del Rey uh, one, right? Yeah, yeah, the Del Rey one. It's it's pretty it's funny I you know I got a uh, I got the I, I was curious I, I got like a first edition one because a they're everywhere and they they cost like a dollar and uh, b um, I wanted to see you know I wanted to see like all the like pre just I wanted to see all the early installment weirdness and there's there's a lot of it you know <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it, it's like you open it up and it's still like you know from the journal of the wheels and it's like he's still trying to like figure out like if it's some kind of you know if, if it's if it's star wars is the franchise or journal of the wills is the franchise uh-huh. or uh-huh. adventures of luke skywalker is the franchise and you know they it, it's the, the implication is that the uh the empire is you know that the empire was sort of structured by the uh, by the sort of like warlord bureaucrats like Darth Vader and uh, like Grand Moff Tarkin, and right, that the, the governor, the, that sure. the emperor has been like forced into hiding basically by these warlords. Where it's like they've sort of restructured the entire and em- they've restructured the republic, and they're like, all right, emperor, you're the emperor now. Also, stay the fuck in your room. That's like that's like the <laughs> Japanese Empire. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. the yeah, yeah. So it's more, yeah, you can see it's like more of a <laughs> if you, know, you don't like a Rosalo <laughs> movie. <laughs> that that yeah, if you yeah, if you tell me like yeah, going back to not to go back to the Howard Zinn thing, but every time it's like oh they were gonna surrender like art were they? They were really <laughs> fucked up, man. Like they they were telling like they were telling their own people that we were doing fine while they're being firebombed. So like yeah, <laughs> I, got the propaganda machine. Also, works they longer. got firebombed. Like we yeah. killed, we killed a hundred thousand <laughs> Tokyo citizens in an, in like a couple hours that was without nuclear weapons. And so <laughs> dude, like, I learned so much about, dude, I was reading gravity's rainbow. I learned like so much about like fire bombing, like, uh, the dude, like he talks about, um, uh, he talks about like, I think like, what was it like Dresden and like, oh, Berlin. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember like the two, like the two places in, in like, Dresden's yeah, where they were like doing one. the same shit where they were just like, yeah, it's just like, just carpet bomb the whole fucking like you know they, they just show them like carpet bomb like the whole city yeah. and like just like not not even like military targets and so stuff. Dresden and, uh, had I was, more. I was like, Dresden had more buildings made of stone and not paper. Yeah, 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 so yeah. It it's just, it's just, yeah, just like turn the whole city into like a fucking like oven. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, it's, it's, the it's firestorm. Fucking crazy. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah, and I guess like fucking yeah. In, in Japan, it would have been like a million times worse because it's like yo. Yeah, they're still, they're still living like it's 1890 in the fucking Some of them, <laughs> you know, yeah. in the 40s. <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing about uh, Japanese culture is that uh, if you watch like an, a, a Japanese movie that take, if you watch like a Japanese period piece, it's like, well, this could be any time 
between like 1700 and like 1940. Yes. <laughs> like I, I watched, uh, I love, I love me some grindhouse movies. I was watching, um, Turo Ishii's, um, was it curse of the black cat? It has like three different titles. Like it's one of those that where it's like every time it gets like a, every time some American producer gets their grubby mitts on it, it's got like a different title for better marquee value. So it's like, I think the Japanese one is like literally like blind woman's curse or it's like curse of the black cat or is that that one with the crazy cat face on it? That's how Sue, which is also fucking crazy, but yeah, I've seen that um, one. But like blind woman's curse is basically this like crime drama about uh, Yakuza families in, it's like a supernaturally tinged crime drama about Yakuza families in the thirties. But, like, it starts, you know, and it's, like, everyone's just, like, you know, they're walking around in traditional wear. And I thought it was, like, 1800. And then this dude just pulls up in front of a house in, like, a car. <laughs> I was, like, oh, my God. I was, like, yeah. what fucking year is this? Yeah. So it, it's, like, it's, it's, like, gangster shit, like, immediately, like, pre-war Japan. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So if you want to see the weirdest, yeah, if you want to see, like, the weirdest, um, like, Japanese time period, like, that movie is... That movie's great. Like it's awesome. <laughs> it's like that, you know. It's it, it, it's it, it's like that Meiji restoration. Uh, it's just like mutation that they went through in like right, up to right. eleven. <laughs> that I, that first. I mean, I can't recommend that hardcore. If if you listen to the hardcore history podcast, uh, I, everyone says it's rad. So it's I the, haven't. It's so it. good, man. Like Dan Carlin is is like my favorite. Like modern thinker mm-hmm. yeah. like because he doesn't call himself a historian by any means but he's very much a, like a uh even his common sense podcasts are just like okay mm-hmm. <laughs> let's think about this like just he's like i don't really want to react to anything right away because i need to let things settle and see what the fuck's going on so like, like it, you know, so you know, like we had the year twenty twenty, and he had like three podcasts of common sense, and they, they were they were becoming fewer and far between. But mm-hmm. he had one about the impeachment, and one about like the coronavirus, and then one about um, um, uh, how he was not going to vote for a third party this year and going to vote for Biden because. The other guy is clearly steering a ship into an iceberg, like willingly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His words, not mine. And and then like January sixth is like, yeah, what happened? <laughs> like, like <laughs> you know, like we have a situation here where it's like if you have two enemies, like if you, extremists, you know, are only extreme if you are extreme from the north. Like like he was talking about. Um, now he's he wasn't really necessarily like a middle of the road guy by any means, but he was very much saying like, okay, if you're a sane, rational, normal human being, and it's just trying to make their way in the world, you're not like extremely left or extremely right. You know, you're seeing yeah. extremely left, and extremely right people go at it. And of course those two need, it's like a symbiotic relationship. They need the other to exist, to have an enemy to further yeah. their cause. <laughs> You know, like if you have like extreme Nazis versus like rational like Democratic Republican Americans, uh, or, or in that small D small, yeah, yeah, then you're gonna go, yeah, go, fuck off, like go away, like no, <laughs> yeah. But if you have the left, it just goes. But it's like if they have a go, if they have a uh, an enemy to like an Antifa like boogeyman to go. Oh, see, what about these guys? These guys yeah. are like, <laughs> what about the communists? What about the socialists? What about those guys? I'm like, what about them? Like, but also yeah. they're existing here too. So it's like, and they're just as like, you know, not just as vitriolic, but like they're differently. They're, they're, they're barely uh, or, or barely well, existing. <laughs> they have their own problems and it has more about organization and, and cohesiveness <laughs> and, and actually uh, action. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's like there there's but, like people who are worried about it, like there is not there's not an organized left like it doesn't exist. That's the like, problem with the left. It's the biggest. Yeah, problem. that's yeah, that, that like that's the problem. It's like there always isn't been one. the problem <laughs> is that yeah. they don't fall in line. Like yeah, like, conservative cats tend to fall in line because they know. It tur- yeah, it turns out that the, yeah, it turns out that the, the people who like bootlicking 
love fucking like hierarchically structured uh social organizations yes so it's yes. like they 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 just coalesce that way and like the people who love their like schizophrenic leaderless communes guess what they don't organize very well yeah and the funny thing <laughs> is the funny thing is they actually do <laughs> naturally speaking hierarchies form in those leaderless communes anyway regardless if they wanted to or not that's like that's the curse of just being human. Dude. Yeah, that's 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 just us being by nature. Like like hierarchy is formed in those communes anyway, and like like even in like say uh, uh, say like the like we'll use the Grateful Dead this example. It's like yeah, Jerry Garcia was the leader. He didn't want to, and he always said he wasn't, but he was. There's yeah, a de facto yeah. <laughs> leader. Like the, he had the just, funk. Everyone everyone gave it to him. He, yeah. The, he, yeah, he he's like he was like the elder, you know. He's like, we don't have leaders, man. I don't want to be the leader of this band. We're just a collective thing. It's like, no, yeah, but everything you do, we go with, and you also write the songs, and you also, yeah, <laughs> and you also play the lead guitar, and you also kind of dictate where the jams are going, like sort of in a way, but like, yeah, yeah. And you're like you, you, you're the leader, dude. I can't, sorry, and also everybody thinks you are anyway. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I can't help you, mate. Like, it just kind of happens. Or so it's like you know, there's there's collecting peeps, there's personalities like that that people there's personalities people glue to. And this is kind of mm-hmm. what I learned about the planets thing too. That they kind of glued they think it like they're enamored with a specific personality. Um, and and like uh, like a guy like Adam Stillwell tends to generate that that sort of community by his uh, or Jim Henson. But, yeah, he's got, he's got the animal magnetism. Yeah, where you're just like, <laughs> this guy is gonna take us places, like, or, or mm-hmm. you know what I mean, like, or this guy, like, th- like, you know, there's not a reason like we're gonna go meet every other house or here, like, it always you gotta have a place. He had the place, or you know, whatever. So it's like the guy with the or the, with the vision, and, and it's still kind of a collective thing. But it's you know, mm-hmm. even filmmakers need to have a singular. Like, visions anyway back and back to the political talk you know like those guys you know the left is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a fucking like mess communism right now. communism didn't te- like we can all talk about communism not working but the times it was actually functioning as a government point of government or yeah. regime <laughs> was when they had uh, uh authoritarian leaders running it so like yeah, yeah. true yeah yeah like, you're communism right, you're right. In, its, in, in theory is the most democratic thing you could possibly do everybody's got a thing we all work for each other blah 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 yeah but it's like when you well it's, you know it's, it's wilhelm reich's thing it's like everyone loves to be a fascist it's like it's like people want the people want the daddy dom <laughs> it's like it's like hardwired <laughs> into us man <laughs> yeah that also leads into the uh fascism like you know like with well, the, the like hitler won the war by means of turning all those Republican uh, democracies and, 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 you know, into making authoritarian decisions that they would not normally make to defeat Mm -hmm. fascism in Europe and in, in, in uh, uh, warmongers in Japan or whatever. Like, like it's (laughs) like, you know, I really, you know, I'm going to steer it back to book club shit. Yeah. Yeah. Please. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, the, the, you know this is Ronnie if you if you really want like a if you want really good um a really good uh super depressing um just like end of you know this is speaking of end of empires um I, I just read this uh, book by uh, John Michael Greer called uh I read two books by him one was one was very good one was one was pretty bad um uh one was um uh God, fucking Dark Age America, which is basically just this like super brutally honest like breakdown of like the sort of like environmentalist catastrophe oh, okay. like oh. like facing us. Um it, it, you, you know, it, 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 and then it's sort of his his analysis of like uh uh he kind of takes this guy. I, I ended up picking up this dude's book, um uh, Study of History by Arnold Toynbee. You, you probably I don't know, you maybe heard of it. You might even have it. But he was—I I guess he was one of the first dudes. He kind of does this like post-structuralist analysis of history as these kind of, you know, as you know, as these sort of like you know rhizomatic um, sort of organisms that like rise and like decay. And uh, he's 
you know, he, he's just got these like this like big thick book where he sort of analyzes the, you know, the the beginnings of like the Rome, uh, you know, like the Greek empires and like mm-hmm. the Roman empires and like their sort of like dissolution. And he sort of traces the, you know, like the rise and fall, rise and declines of empires. And he's like, yeah, just like there's these really obvious things that happen when, <laughs> when like empires get too big. And then yes. it's like they, you know, they just kind of fray at the edges, and then that, uh-huh. you know, that fraying, you know, that fraying just ends up like you know slowly creeping inwards, and you know, it's real obvious, and it happens literally the same way cross culturally everywhere. <laughs> and and it's, so it's pretty good, and and so like John Michael Greer is a, he is a like he's a wizard, so he's like a he's like a druid. So he's kind of a Luddite, and he's he's definitely, if you read Dark Age America, he's, like, definitely, like, hoping for, like, the dissolution of, <laughs> of like, <laughs> capitalism. Which, I mean, like, honestly, like, we're all, I, I'm kind of down, because I like the, uh, um, we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, it, it's like, we don't have a lot of, like, post-capitalism visionary science fiction kind of stuff anymore, you know? It's that, it's that capitalist realism stuff where we can't, we can't imagine like an alternative to it, you know. Well, yeah, you get, you get, like, well, I guess the wall, idea is that wall-y. it's easier to imagine the apocalypse than it is to like imagine like you know imagine like this system like ending. Well, yeah, um, yeah even the Star Trek stuff that the only ones I could think of that were like like that were was Star Trek, especially TNG, yeah. and like yeah, that's you know that's what that's what people are talking about, you know, this sort of like speculative fiction of like but, like all our favorite. Hollywood writers like uh, um, what's his face, um, t- the guys that wrote the the Star Trek, uh, Ro- Robert Orsi and uh, Alex Kurtzman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kurtzman and Orsi, <laughs> they kind of like took all those nice little stories and shoved them down the drain. You're like, oh god, like, like, like I don't know, like I, I did not watch Picard, but I watched reviews of Picard that from people I trusted. And it's like, yeah, everyone said, yeah, Picard kind of sucks from what I hear. <laughs> yeah, where it's like, oh my gosh, you know, we're going to talk about topical things. Like, there's Fox. Fox News now exists in a post capitalist society. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's like even our, our, our utopian fiction from the 60s has been infiltrated by capitalist realism and, and all of its problems. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's a, it's a, that's, yeah. It's but Dark Age America. Dark Age America is cool. It's uh, um, I think you, I think you dig it. It's it, you know it kind of analyzes the uh, you know it, it analyzes the way that like new cultures sort of form and uh, you know that sort of form and like conglomerate and you know he's he you know, he's it, it's interesting because he's like you know if nothing like you know barring like the the like Yellowstone volcano exploding like basically the death rate only has to like increase like something like three percent like and then like or like in the united states alone it just has to increase like three percent and then it's like out fucking doing the the like birth rate <laughs> so apparently i don't i didn't really he, he cites all his sources and stuff i didn't really follow up on it but he says that you know our our um our um population stats are a little bit inflated because you know we have a lot of immigration yeah. So it's like we have a lot of people from other countries like coming here and it's like that's you know that's kind of like what's making it seem like we still have like a lot of people it's like not the birth rates. <laughs> so and he says you know the what what a 3% increase in in death rate looks like it's like it's not like an it's not like an apocalyptic event all it is is like you know say you know instead of every couple of years like your grandma or someone some old person you know like keels over finally it's like you know, maybe every couple of years, it's like if you take like the hundred people, you know, like maybe you're it's like maybe your you know, your barista at Starbucks gets like a weird, you know, gets some weird cancer when she's like 25 because of all the industrial pollution. Just you know, and then like an old person with a bad immune system keels yeah. over and maybe like a baby with a is bad it, immune he, system. Is keels he kind of like a Thomas Malthus kind of guy? Is he like a he's, Mathi- I don't Malthusian? think he's that. No, I don't think he's that that um evil <laughs> he you know he's he, he, he you know he's, he's just kind of like calling it he's 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 like an extreme environmentalist okay. you know so okay. he's got he's got that uh uh he's got that like he's got that like this is like he's, he's just like real talk 
this is probably what During it's going to look like. Yeah. You know, where he's, you know, because, he, you know, he's talking about like how, um, you know, he was saying some really spooky prophetic stuff about how um, basically the end of the dark, the end of empires and the entrance into like a dark age. Like that's like the, uh, that's sort of like the heroic age for like barbarian cultures, you know, where it's like the end of the Roman empire. That's where we get like, king arthur and like all, all this stuff you know it's like arturius was probably just some anglo-saxon warlord that like everyone sure. was you know that just yeah, like yeah. everyone knew and then you know i was, th- I was thinking he's like yeah that that incursion of like the barbarian warlord is you know that happens because the uh you know it, it happens because there's you know they're more local than like some like weird like abstract byzantine form of like distant government so it's like right. when the warlord lo- rolls into town, it's like everyone's like, "Yeah, fuck it, I'll just give the." It's like I'll pay taxes to this fucking guy because, like, first of all, he's right here. I don't know fucking senator what's his name. Like, I've never even seen the guy. Yeah, and it's like this guy's here with all the swords, and he's he's gonna at least protect the town. And I'm like, dude, that's just cartel shit. That's just the cartel. It's, ma- it's right mafia. Now. Yeah, it's basically it's the it's the same uh, patriot. Yeah. Is is it's the. Which is Roman in its own right, uh, is the yeah. is the patron. Yeah, it's, ma- system. It's, it's mafia shit, you know. Yeah, it's it's like the it, it's like the uh, you know the you know power sources move in to fill the vacuums right. left by you know left by sort of crumbling um, you know left by like crumbling infrastructure and yeah. uh, yeah. you know it's it, it it it's really interesting. Dark Age America was really cool. It's based, it's essentially a summary of uh, of the Arnold Toynbee book. Um, so maybe if you want the full picture, just check out the Arnold Toynbee one. Um, Toynbee it was like an English guy, so he his his thing was more like, yeah, England's fucking done. I think this was written in like the maybe the thirties. When did he write this? Oh, I got the I got, I got it right here. Um, forty six. It was like forty six England. Okay. Um, so he, yeah, he's kind of like one of those like uh, like in the tradition of like Oswald Spengler, like decline of the West. Yeah, kind of, of course, guy. that's around the time the British Empire was losing, about to lose all its colonies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he was, he was kind of like, you know, he had a head up, a heads up on that, and so he called it. Um, but yes, Dark Age America was really cool. Um, you know, just with all the stuff we've been talking about, about fucking um, empire ending, and uh, and and it's on Audible. You can you can get an Audible subscription for sixteen ninety nine and give us money, Audible. <laughs> um yeah it, it, it was it was really good um you know it talk it's specifically it's more environmental collapse oriented yeah and i really yeah. like um I, I i i've been really vibing on like uh sort of like near future um like i guess like reconstructed post-apocalypse you know yeah. where it's like I really like that vibe of like it's like oh yeah we're <laughs> it's like we're in the interim between like huge fucking like monster upheavals but like everything's like completely different. I like to call it like the uh, I like to call it like the Adventure Time fucking <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's yeah, like yeah. the Adventure Time aesthetic of like um or I, I guess it's sort of present in like Yoko Taro games too like like uh, like Near and and Dragon Guard where it's like humanity is just always just poised between like gigantic catastrophes. And it's just like you know, you're seeing these like slices of like of uh, interims between like huge disasters. <laughs> I think that's I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, we should probably wrap it up because I want to keep these uh, within you know hour and a half hour shows. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure everyone loves listening to our fucking nerd book shit. <laughs> I, I, you know what? We're here for us, baby. So uh, yeah, we're here for us, man. This is this is psychological. This is a uh, if I'll we can't talk them. about our fucking piles of unread books, where are we going to fucking talk about? I it? know it makes me give me an excuse to actually finish them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then so, we can, yeah, then we can actually. So, you know, what we should we can make it constructive, and we should make it a book club, and then we all have to we all have to, we're all forced to read the same shit. <laughs> yeah, although <laughs> and for me, I'm always like, ah, but I gotta actually finish what I got. Like I'm just you know. Oh yeah. I, I even, well, I hey, we got the, we got Audible now, so we can just, we just digitize our whole library. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have a I have a method to that madness too, because like I when I'm working out, I only listen to ancient Greek stuff, so I kind of feel that physical like exertion of like the Greek yeah body yeah yeah thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I got to channel that Achilles energy. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, or I'm just going, you know, hiking and stuff. But, um, and then I gotta um, finish. I gotta finish this one too. Have you read this? What is? The, oh shit! Oh, I know about this. this yeah, is the big, that this looks is the new, That's the a, new he's a copy of. He's holding up a copy of Chaos, the Charles Manson and the CIA fucking around it's in the sixties. Companion 60s. piece to the Quentin Tarantino book. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> is it uh Is it like? Is it? Is it? Is it good info or is it like? Uh, is it like more satanic panic kind of stuff? Oh god, I I have not started it, but I've, here's what I did here, and this is probably the well, last thing I'll say about it until I actually start reading it. Um, is that I believe when Tarantino was doing his research and he was talking to Mark Marin about this was that, you know, the first book you're supposed to read about Manson is Helter Skelter. It's like the first one that came out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bugliosi. And, uh, that's the one first one I read. It's the only one I read actually. Apparently mm-hmm. there's another one or there's a couple different books that have kind of dispelled and kind of challenged. This is what happens. This is almost like a history, like history, actual historians and history books where it's like someone writes the first definitive history uh, that's yeah, not yeah. a pri- that's not a primary source, and even the primary sources can't be trusted because of perspectives and um, you know their own lack of actual. Sometimes, like like for example, yeah, they're uh, all fucking nuts. You can't like, like go to Charles Fuch- Manson like, and ask him what happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you like, I'm, I'm like like the, for example, the Battle of Midway. Like the guy who uh, Fuchida Hitsiro, uh, Hits- I forgot his name. Fuchida is the guy who 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 mm. uh, he wrote a book after he survived. First off, he survived. Pearl Har- he, he led the attack on Pearl Harbor, the actual planes. So fucking crazy. Uh-huh. And then, and then he was on, but all those carriers were like sunk at Midway, um, mm-hmm. with the exception of two. But, um, uh, but he was he actually somehow survived. Um, Holy shit! Midway <laughs> to write about it, and I don't I don't think he get he was you know the way Midway worked. I'm not gonna get into it, but like essentially, it's, we knew they were coming, so we acted like they knew they were coming, and then just waited for all their planes to come over midway and so we could bomb so we can go after the ships that were defenseless Mm -hmm. um more defenseless but um anyway the point was he had a whole perspective on it about and criticizing nagumo and all these different people and it's like well and then now there's like a more (laughs) there's a history there's a book called shattered sword that's like in detail goes through the japanese side of everything of um, and how and he's like they're all basically like supporting and debunking previous historians and, and sources. Uh-huh. So that's kind of what I think this, the, the Banson books okay. have done is basically all right, all right. we have their first source and the trial and more or less the legend of what happened. And now we're like, now each, each book that comes out on the subject will now review. And, and this is cause I'm, this is, you know, I mostly read nonfiction at this point. So like kind of reviewing and like going over and debating the two, you know, like the previous sources and what happened and based yeah, on yeah, new sources yeah. that come out and refuting these things. And that's kind of how history works because, you know, this is where like, it's, I, but reality is fuzzy. And <laughs> yeah. So this is why like, not, not to like, not to go on another rant, but like, this is why the 1619 project is not a big deal to me. Mm-hmm. Because people are going, well, it's not real history. It's someone's. It's a biased agenda history. I'm like, yeah, but so is everything. So like, yeah, every, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> so like, yeah. We've, you, we've the the more information you get, it's like you know you could, yeah. From the from the different perspective, it's like you can draw better. You know, you can draw a more accurate. Yeah, you know, like it, it's, you know? <laughs> it's heavily biased towards critical race theory. I'm like, well, that's a theory, and you're allowed to discuss that, and you're allowed to refute yeah. that. And it's like, there's been books that have come out like 1621. What really happened? I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's not, that's not going to help one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not helping to, you know, but like there's that whole, uh, just, just the idea of like, um, and Carlin talks about this a lot. If you watch his interviews and where he's, there's like, there's a, there's a new version of history, which is very, because we live in, um, very, we live in a time where everything's highly documented in real time. Yeah, videos, yeah, yeah. Fo- photos, all these things since like since the 20th century onward, and so we our our way of explaining history is very much of a crime scene investigation where we were trying to find yeah, evidence yeah, to yeah. support <laughs> these things. And before that, you didn't have that, and you really kind of had to rely on a more narrative based structure and telling stories. The Will Durant's, the Gwen Dyers, those guys. Um, 
uh, Will Dur- yeah, Will Durant, I think I already said that, mm-hmm. in which they were explaining stories in a very f- more fluid narrative that may, and for the most part, a lot of them are, are, are like, uh, based on my history of, like, the Renaissance that I was deep diving in last year, and, and still I'll return to that when I know I'm going to Florence. Um, but, like, um, that kind of v- vibe of, like, what's it, like, Will Durant's versions are very much kind of romanticized for better or for worse um yeah and yeah. And, and, and you know it's still kind of real people, people forget too that it's like you know people forget too that the uh you know e- e- even in our our like constant surveillance age that like uh you know even with all the surveillance and like online stuff it's like that's it's like videotapes are still can still be like representational you know yes <laughs> Especially, you know, we get, you know, the further we get, ironically, I think, like, the more, the further technology develops and video technology develops, it's like, yeah, you will basically just be able to create nearly indistinguishable, uh, you know, videos and photos and things and, (laughs) you know, or in voices. And so it's like, it's like even, uh, um, you know, even, you know, stuff like photography and and, uh, videography, it's like that's becoming like a representational art form like it's not actually uh <laughs> you know it, yep. it, it's it's not it's losing its one-to-one correspondence with mm-hmm. experience right so yeah. it's so like even now you know it's like with the uh yeah it's it's a it's like a limit thing it's like the more information you have it's like you never really get like the full picture it's like you you're always just like approaching a you know you're just approaching a limit infinitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it's like the harder you zoom in on it the line isn't actually there, you know, it's a, it, the line, the line is an abstraction. So it's like you get closer and closer to it, but it's just, you know, it's just infinitely fuzzier and, and fuzzier the closer you get to it. Yeah. Anyway, I'll stop fucking yeah, that bothering was, your that was great. I have to go chase, I have to chase the cockroaches <laughs> out of my bed and I have to go take a shit. Wonderful. That's a great way to <laughs> yeah, stop that. Here, yeah. All right. Well, we'll yeah. see. We'll see you next week then. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll see you next Thursday. Sounds good. All right. See you later, Steve Arino. All right. Take care, man. <laughs>